Alright, hi everyone. This video is more of a public service announcement than one of our regular videos, so I'm not going to be showing you any exciting Blender techniques or news pieces or projects. But what I will be doing in this video is telling you to be careful. But what am I referring to? Well, now obviously I do not endorse the piracy of paid add-ons, okay? I'm an add-on developer myself. I make all kinds of free and paid resources for the Blender community. But what I will say is if you do pirate add-ons, firstly, don't do it. And secondly, be very, very careful where you get them from. Because one thing I've seen in the community recently, and the reason I'm making this video, is that someone downloaded a pirated version of an add-on, then tried to use it, then received a virus, then went to the original developer of the add-on asking for help, and as far as I could interpret, kind of blaming them, like, as to why the add-on wasn't working. And then the add-on developer goes ahead and says, well, yeah, it's not our problem. You went and pirated an illegitimate version of the add-on and got a virus for it, that's your fault. And it is, realistically. But the interesting thing about this event was that once the person got the virus, they went straight to Twitter and tried to blame the original add-on developer. I'm having a look now and the tweet has since been deleted. But yeah, I just thought I should make this PSA to let you know that yes, there are people out there that want to put viruses in these paid add-on packages because they want to exploit your desire to get them for free. Now, that's not just me saying that as like a kind of manipulative technique to stop you from pirating stuff that you can't afford, although for legal reasons I don't endorse it. But I understand that piracy is like a core part of the learning process I suppose, like realistically, who amongst you have not pirated a piece of Adobe software at least once in your life? I think for certain companies it's become like a valuable part of their marketing and business model. Kind of behind the scenes maybe letting people pirate some software, maybe cracking down on a few cases just to make sure it doesn't go too over the top, but in a lot of cases people that do pirate software growing up with it end up kind of becoming attached to the software and therefore once they get old enough, once they get enough money, once they make it part of their job, actually paying in, buying in and giving the company money. So what I'm saying is yes I understand piracy is a part of the system, it's, it's something that we can't really do much about. It is a bit of a shame though and it's one of the reasons why I give so much of my stuff away for free and I am absolutely shooting myself in the foot financially for that. And it does get annoying of course like when I put something paid out I'll always get some message complaining about it being a paid product and I'm like look I have probably put more of a load on Gumroad servers, then I have made the money back, which is a bit of a problem. If I just check my all-time statistics for Gumroad, there have been 226,308 transactions. The vast majority, I would say about 95 or more percent of those are free transactions. So that's people not wanting to pay for anything, going and downloading, forcing the bandwidth onto Gumroad and then getting the product. Now there is something that like developers can get back for distributing free products. We do get a certain amount of donations, but it really depends because you know, you're kind of looking at point something percent of people which do leave donations. It depends on whether the product has a sense of value. Things like add-ons are more likely to get donations than other products because people get a high sense of value from those, but it's definitely not enough to live off. And there is like a bit of an anxiety when developing things. You think, well, why would I make it paid when people are just going to pirate it anyway? You know, and that anxiety is a bit of a factor which prevents larger projects from being made. Now, it does sound a bit stupid because that kind of self-sabotage is the developer's fault, but it is an existing concern. But another thing I will say, because I've seen some other developers get a bit annoyed about this recently is that there are some websites which have been around for a while whose entire purpose is just for distributing paid versions of stuff in the community, paid blender courses, paid blender add-ons, paid blender resources and they'll distribute the entire package so absolutely everything for free. Now there is a bit of a Robin Hood aspect of that I think that they think they're the hero because they're giving all this stuff away for free and on one side of it okay that's quite nice yes it's a free and open source community however it is illegal and you'd be forgiven for thinking that the people are doing it out of the goodness of their heart because on these websites you will see clear as day a donation link on the page. Look I'm taking these people's paid resources I'm giving them away for free aren't I such a good person by the way donate to me so they're making money off of the content as well so not only is it illegal on one count it's illegal on two counts. I should also clear up something about the add-on licenses like the GPL license because I see a lot of misinformation in the community and again I'm not like a legal expert but I believe this to be true and I can be corrected by other members of the community if they have the right knowledge. The GPL license declares that anything which interacts with the Blender Python API automatically adopts the GPL license as well. So a lot of people have been running around the community saying oh you're allowed to share the add-ons you're allowed to share them by the way because they're GPL so it's fine and that's not really correct. It's correct for many add-ons, many simple add-ons, which are just the code files. But a lot of these larger add-ons, these paid ones, the product, the package, is not 
just an add-on. There can be packages of complex different types of files that can include add-on files which are basic Python files which do interact with the Blender Python API. They could be separate Python modules which could be proprietary and licensed in a different way which are just being used as functional helpers. I don't believe the GPL license is naturally adopted by those modules but I may need some clarification on that. For example if they're just like mathematical helper functions which are being used by an add-on which is interacting with Blender then I don't really think that one adopts GPL if it's not directly interacting with the API. But then on the side of that the more obvious thing is that a lot of these add-on packages have artistic content. Now artistic content can be licensed in a variety of different ways. Now this content is not an add-on. It's packaged with the add-on, it may interact with the add-on but it's not an add-on and therefore it does not adopt the GPL license therefore it cannot be shared the same way. So what I'm saying is just be very careful because if you've been told by someone in the community that you can share an add-on because the GPL says you can share it you might be breaking the law without realizing it. So I just thought I should make this public service announcement because I know there are a fair amount of younger community members it's not exclusive to younger members but I know that when we're talking about the distribution of money when I've got messages from people saying that they can't afford something and can they have a free copy which is fine you you know, I totally understand that happens. They tend to be on the younger side, which, you know, makes sense because they're less likely to have a job and they probably won't have an allowance, especially not in like lesser developed parts of the world. And you've got to remember that the Blender community and the YouTube community is definitely global. It's worldwide. Another thing to keep an eye on as well is that if you do download files from somewhere else, first of all, don't ever open a blend file you don't trust. If it's an add-on, you shouldn't have to open a blend file. But if for some reason you do get a blend file, if you open it and then you get a warning saying auto running scripts is disabled, would you like to run scripts? Don't run them unless you know why that warning has appeared. For example, when I talked about the Z Anatomy project recently, I explained how it was a blend file you can download. It has an interactivity script in it, which means that every time you click on a different part of the body, it's going to change what appears in the Blender text editor window. To give you some information, that's an open source project, you know exactly what it does. But the thing is, someone can package a virus in a Blender file and have it so that when you click to execute the Python code, which is contained in the file, it can do whatever it wants to your files. People that haven't been educated about that or don't necessarily realize that potential might just follow along with it anyway because they think they're getting something nice for free. So please just be aware that there are nefarious distributors out there that are packaging malicious programs and malware inside of free versions of paid add-on packages. And if you do download an illicit version and if something does go wrong, like if you do get a virus from it, do not go running to the original add-on creator complaining to them and asking them to try and fix the problem. Now, of course, all of this is common sense to most people, but I think, you know, it would be nice to try and just inform other members of the community. So if you see anyone yourself that, you know, that's asking for free copies or, or if you see anyone that's sharing dodgy looking download links for Blender products, then dissuade those community members from clicking on them because, you know, ultimately it would be nice for us to try and protect each other and stopping these nefarious actors from stealing people's personal data, stealing their money, encrypting their files, blackmailing, etc. Now there are a group of different creators in the community which have been trying to fight against this, trying to take down the websites which are distributing this stuff. You know it's a very difficult thing to fight against and it's pretty much for the same reasons which I described in my NFT video, or at least very similar in regards to like DMCA takedowns and stuff like that. But yeah, hope you're all doing well. Please stay safe, share the warning around if you like. Happy blending and I will see you next time.